Hello, now our next guests are the only people in the world who have walked continuously along the entire length of the Great Wall of China. They've cycled through eight countries down the coast of Africa on the worst bikes they could find and they're planning on being the first people to haul themselves around the globe from one pole to the other. Welcome Tarka Lepinier. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And Katie Jane Cooper. It's really lovely to have you both here. May I say, I think you're both insane. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely barking. <laughs> you have to get on pretty well to do these together, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's difficult because we have to spend so much time together. Mm. But so many of the environments that we get put in mean that you can't really have a tantrum with each other and you can't just walk off. So yeah. I think you just have to sit Does it make you quite close to doing all those, those miles on foot together? Or yeah. bike bike? Yeah, I think it, I think it does. Yeah, I mean, but even when we're at home, we... You know, we live together, we train together, yeah. work is together. Yeah. We very rarely spend an hour apart. So. Katie, you, you were a model before this. Before you? I met Tarka, yes. Well, yeah. That's a big departure. Yeah, he convinced me that, you know, living yeah. in minus 50 with no food is a really it's good a career change. Thing to yeah. do. <laughs> but this is what I love, because looking at you, you wouldn't think that you do kind of hardcore adrenaline adventures. I mean, you look Try very elegant and very refined. <laughs> and but the, the Great Wall of China, it's equivalent to doing 102 marathons in a row. That's amazing. Yeah. It must have been exhausting. <laughs> it was uh, looking, I mean, I loved the fact I did it and mm. now it all seemed great. But at the time, I can't remember many days when I was glad I was there. I mean, I spent a lot of time crying and wishing I'd I never started, but I did start and I was going to finish. And now I've done it, I'm thrilled. I was just yeah. reading some of the notes here. It says some Tarka's friends have been quoted as saying they first realised he wasn't normal when he turned up on foot to a holiday gathering in the south of France, having run all the way from the UK because he couldn't afford the airfare. <laughs> you should have got out at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, uh, some of the things you do, you cycle down the whole of the east coast of Africa. Uh, this summer, um, Patagonian ice fields. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And next year, um, you're going to pole to pole. Okay. We're hoping. We, uh, the pole to pole we've been planning for seven years now. Wow. Um, well, these are phenomenal feats. I mean, this is the sort of stuff that the Marines do, or the, or the SAS would, would happily embrace. Yeah. I mean, how do you, I mean, a certain amount of this is mind over matter, isn't it? Massive, all, all almost all of it. I think the amazing thing that we learn actually from taking people sometimes on these trips is that anybody is actually capable of doing a lot of these things. And certainly when I was on Everest in yeah. places, you meet people you just wouldn't expect to be able to do these sorts of you things. You must just go into like some sort of different zone, must you? Um, or just get lost in your I own think thoughts? A, yeah, I think a lot of it's just learning to be very introspective and, and thinking yeah. about... Yeah, actually, quite often food is what you end up thinking about. Because All day long. food's got to play a huge <laughs> part. <laughs> <laughs> food must play a huge part in it, because I'm assuming a lot of the time when you're sort of stuck in the middle of that, you've got to eat what you've packed, haven't you? Or, or I bet you've eaten some strange things in your time. Yeah, well, you tend to, to crave what your body is wanting the most, mm -hmm. uh, so it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. And actually, having you know watched uh, you guys and, and Nick and everybody preparing meals, I think I'm in the wrong job because <laughs> we get to eat um, this sort of stuff. Yeah, so what, what is that? Yeah, gruel. It's basically it's not really gruel. You get all these sort of meals. What and is reindeer stew? Yeah, reindeer stew. Actually. Yeah, that's one of the higher higher end ones. <laughs> yes. um, but basically, they just have all the moisture sucked out of them, so they're incredibly light to carry yeah. and right. high calorie value. Um, the problem is when you've got to eat three of them a day mm. every day for six months, uh, and you only have four or five different flavours. Mm. Um, it all starts to wear a little bit. Thin. I mean, that must take up your whole rucksack. I mean, this rucksack here that that uh, carries your boat. It depends what trip. For example, in China, we right. didn't carry any of this. We okay. relied completely on what we could get from the locals, as and when we passed villages. Right. Sometimes we might go for three days without food, and then we'd be surrounded by it and eat till we were kind of sick. Yeah. <laughs> Lightness is a thing. I mean, you, you've even mm. gone to the extremes of cutting down toothbrushes and yes. like this super light you know, spoon, spoon fork thing. Like this. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of thought going into this. Isn't yeah, it? I think you'd be surprised. I mean, when you've got to carry your life on your back, you start yeah, becoming you think very, it, very you? Because particular. that rucksack is, is what you take for both of you. Uh, no, 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 we would both have a um, backpack, right. which would be actually be bigger than this because we also would have a sleeping bag. Okay. Um, your sleeping bag in your tent is obviously quite voluminous, mm. but actually all the additional things to your sleeping bag and tent that you need to survive right. for the two of us would really sit in there. Other than food. Yeah. I wouldn't get my shoes in that for a minute. Oh, yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, she wouldn't get her shoes in either. Well, look, the, the guys, there's a clip allowed. of you here in, in China. Let's just take a look. I just climbed three and a half thousand feet to get to the top of, well, to find the wall, and I believe I just walked under it. Not amused! Not amused! I can't believe they're actually excited about the wall. I really didn't think it would happen. It's been such an enemy for the past four months. 
this is our last bit of food we have. Crushed, as everything we have. Um, there's an Orion pie. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of an Orion pie. It says it's the finest taste of original chocolate pie, but there's nothing remotely chocolate pie about it. The best thing is it's out of date, but considering it's all we have, it tastes pretty good. So the next trip is Patagonia. Yep, basically Patagonia, uh, lots of people don't actually even know where it is. It's essentially the third biggest ice cap in the world. So there's um, uh, Antarctica, mm. then Greenland, and then Patagonia. And it's never been crossed in its entirety without support before. So we're okay. going to... Then you've got to put on three stone each yes. to do it. You yep. should stick around here. You'll do that in a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, okay, so there's something to take with you. On your oh, next, on your next journey, thank yeah. you. Think of us, treasure yeah. it. Think of us oh, while it's crushed at the bottom of your rucksack. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely to meet you both, and really, really good luck. Yeah, with good it. luck. Rather Thanks you than that. us, I think. Absolutely. Don't you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>